All right, all right, guys. Dreadnought's back today with another review. And we're going to be looking at the Sideshow Marvel Deadpool 6 scale figure. You can see this is a Sideshow exclusive. Pretty cool box. Has a plasticky feel to it. Uh, some nice artwork here on the front with Deadpool. Kind of carries around to the side with his thumbs up over there. And then a little bit more on this side as well. Taking a look at the back, you can see that same artwork here in a black and white grayscale picture. A little info here at the bottom. Uh, Deadpool logo at the top of the box, and I believe there's one at the bottom as well. Yep, down there. So let's crack this bad boy open and get a and look at it. And just a quick look inside the box. I wanted to show you guys. It does have this plastic sleeve uh, that covers the top of the foam inside there, which is pretty cool. It has the Deadpool logo and a bullseye on it, and that is feels like plastic. Uh, and then there's the foam cover. Uh, we'll set that aside. And then you see Deadpool in here. Uh, you know, surrounded by foam. And there is another layer under here as well. And I'm going to take this out and remove it. And uh, so you can see underneath here. I'll get the bottom out here. Like so. And if you take a look at that, you can see more of the accessories that are packaged in the bottom of the box. So we'll get the rest of this stuff off and take a closer and look. And here's Deadpool out of the packaging, just looking completely awesome. Uh, you can see the exclusive head there, the head pool, uh, just looking really cool there on the side. Uh, I just really like what Sideshow did with all the little details and all the little accessories. You know, lots of pouches here. Lots of little nice little touches. Not to say the figure is perfect. Uh, definitely has a few issues, and I'll get to those a little later. Uh, but overall, just a great job from Sideshow. And show. as we get a closer look at accessories up first is our head pool here. You can see some very nice detail sculpted in here. Uh, it has the mask, of course. And, uh, you know, you can see some uh, wear on it. The eyes get a little bit washed out, maybe a little more defined would have looked a little better but nice sculpting through the the zombie teeth here uh you know looks really good I like the paint apps they used in the wash uh nice brown and silver paint apps here around the strap and then the helmet has some nice dings and cracks in it, it has that copper look you know that old metallic look uh nice and dinged up in uh, several places there's another one there the propeller doesn't turn but it does have some nice wear uh, showing in here looks very much aged. Uh, just really a good job overall. And part of the spine down there does have the hole in the back uh, to mount to this piece here. Uh, and I'll show you that real quick. Uh, it comes with uh, these brackets uh, to hold the uh, word bubbles up and this. And this just plugs in the back uh, like so uh, to hold him like so. And uh, works pretty well. The first time you have to work it in. Uh, but after that, it fits on there pretty well and uh, works pretty good. Uh, and speaking of the word bubbles, uh, we've got a yellow one and then a white one here. Um, I'll show you that. You can see that. Uh, and then it has the clip on the back for the same thing. And this just slides in here on the back and holds that in place, um, as you saw in the first shot. Um, a lot of questions about the stickers uh, they're not static and if any of you watched the sideshow video you know their suggestion was just to stick them on barely and uh, <clears throat> not adhere or put any pressure on them so they would stay in place but yet not stick completely to it uh, so I thought I would try removing this one because that's the method I used for it and it's very tough uh, I'm doing it just like they said, but it does come off. And you can see there's the sticker, uh, and you can see it put some wear on the sticker here uh, where I removed it, and there's a little bit of stickiness. But they say just barely lay it on with no pressure uh, and put it back on like so. Um, you know, so I, I don't think that's going to work very well. Um, you know, so I'm not sure I like that. But to me, the word bubbles weren't a big part of the figure, it was just a nice bonus. Uh, to the figure, uh, in my opinion. Anyway, uh, comes with 10 sets of hands. You can see here uh, we've got uh, gun holding hands, and then we've got one on the figure. Um, nice sculpting in these, some nice detail. It's got these metallic looking uh, pads over the hands, and there's some nice uh, wear uh, brushed in on there. 
Uh, they're real rubbery. I mean, really rubbery. They're really soft. Um, you know, I'm wondering how that's going to do with holding the gun uh, over a length of time because they are so soft. Uh, but definitely have some nice sculpting in here. You can see some black brushed over there. And I like the shade of gray they used. Whoops. Uh, also, there's a sword holding hand. There's two of these as well. And I like the line sculpted in. And these hold the sword pretty well. Uh, like so. So it works good. And then the gun holding hand, we'll try it with a gun. Um, and these are a little tricky to get in sometimes. But once you get them in, they hold the gun really well. So that looks good. We'll take a closer look at those in just a moment. But it does also come with uh, two fists. As you can see here, same kind of sculpting. Looks good. Uh, it comes with a thumbs up, which I definitely will be using. I like this one. Um, it comes with kind of a maybe a grenade holding hand. It's an open hand. Uh, you know, same sculpt. Uh, nice paint. Uh, some of these have better lines in them on the sides than others. That's the only thing I noticed. Uh, like, for example, this one has a little more detail, a little more black uh, brushed over it. Uh, but then it has the peace sign. See there? Looks good. And the OK, which I definitely will be using as well. I like this one. It's one of my favorites. So, yeah, looking pretty good. Uh, so let's take a closer look at the sword. And you can see here, very nice sculpting in here. like that handle, the black and the red. has that leathery look to it. Uh, but it is it does feel like plastic. Um, maybe the blade may have metal underneath, but that's that doesn't feel like it feels like something's coated on the blade itself. Um, you will get some paint rub on the ends as you put them in and out of the hands. I've noticed on my other sword this has started to turn black, which rubs some of the silver off the bottom down here. Um, you know, I like that sheen, just a little bit of detail around the hilt here so looking good and then the blade looks really nice uh, maybe a little bright to pick that up but nice and clean you know look has that metallic look looks good like it and both of them are the same uh, the guns I actually thought these would probably be die cast but it doesn't appear they are uh, there's a little metal piece in there not sure if that's supposed to slide up but I'm not going to mess with it um, nice paint sculpt on, I'm sorry, nice sculpt on here and some nice paint added with the red handles and the black and the white. There's a little bit of bleed over on some of these. You can see under here the red starts to bleed into the silver. And I notice the white starts to bleed over as well into the black. Paint apps aren't perfect on here. You can see some red into the black as well. But, you know, overall they look good. They fit into the holster very nicely. We'll look at it in a minute. Uh, but, you know... Overall, I like them. They look good, and both of those are the same as well. Also, for the hands, it came with additional pegs. Uh, it came with 10 of these, um, you know, which I have used. You don't have to, but uh, I like setting the hands up, putting them on here. So all I've got to do is switch them out quick. And uh, they're a little bit, because the hands are so rubbery, they're a little bit of a pain to put on the first few times. So you really kind of have to work them in. So it's kind of like, you know, that's kind of why I like to use these. That way all you have to do is plug them in and out of the figure. So I just want to set all my hands up and ready to go. So when I switch them out. So, you know, once you have it in, it stays in fairly well. Uh, and then a good look at the, the big gun it came with. And this came in two parts. This part clips on. And I'm not going to take it back off just because uh, the gun seems very fragile. <laughs> it's very, very light. Uh, it does have some nice sculpting in it. And it has that dry brushing, that silver wear on it. Looks really good. Red dot there. The trigger worries me a lot. It seems very fragile. This whole piece seems very fragile down here. So that piece worries me. Look at the end and the scope. Looks really good. Nice red dot there as well. Some red here and through the handle. Uh, there's that wear. And yeah, just a very nice looking piece. Silver at the the front, I don't know if that's supposed to be a silencer or something, but it looks cool. Definitely very comic uh, looking for the gun. So I like that piece as well. And taking a closer look at the accessories on the figure, uh, it comes with several pouches, and I wanted to show you these. The clips are pretty much like this. There are some that clip in from the side. 
uh, and I'm going to show them to you on the figure. But the one thing I want to say is it comes with tons of pouches, but these things fall off so easily. Just moving the figure, uh, these will come off, and they're just dropping off as I'm picking the figure up now. Uh, so they just they slide and clip under these straps, but they are just so loose. Uh, they just come off real easy, and they're kind of a pain in the neck to get back on. Uh, but you can see the different sizes here. Uh, if you look through the chest here, some more like the ones we just looked at. Um, these clip in from the side, and you can see that one just pulled off by touching it. Uh, too bad it doesn't go back on that easy. Uh, but we can work it back on there like so. Uh, here's a look at the grenade that comes with it. And be very cautious with putting these on the straps. There's no clip on them. You actually have to clip the handle, and you kind of have to pry the handle away. I'll show you that. I can get it back off. It's, it's very difficult to get these on and off if you want to have them wearing these. Uh, just kind of have to work it back off like so. Um, and you can see that's what you have to use to clip it in. So be very careful pulling on this. They seem like they'd break real easy. Uh, but nice sculpt on them. I like the paint on them. Um, you know, it looks like maybe they were black and then painted red over because the black really bleeds through on these. Um, but, you know, I like the little eyes on them and some nice metallic look on them as well. Uh, and then uh, looking at the holster here, you can see that. I was going to show you the gun. It goes in fairly easily, easily, like so. And then it has a little metal uh, magnet down there that holds it closed. So, you know, that's pretty cool. Uh, and then on the back for the swords, it has these um, sheets. And it would be cool if you could get it to uh, cross, but they really don't. They just kind of dangle. They're on the same kind of clip system, as you can see, as uh, with the uh, pouches. Uh, and I don't really like this system. It does clip back in fairly easy, but they just really dangle there. Uh, you know, so I'm not really a big fan of that. Uh, and then I'm taking a closer look at the stand here. Um, there's the stand. I actually thought this might be a sticker. But it does appear that it's printed on. This is all plastic. Um, and then this part is supposed to come out pretty easy, but it's a little bit difficult. Uh, but there's a look at the stand. You can see the marvel. It's kind of seems like it's facing the wrong way there. Uh, but all plastic. Got some screws in the bottom. Says Sideshow Collectibles. Not much going on. Um, and then this positions back down in here. Uh, I'm not a fan of this stand. And I'll show you another problem with it, but I, I'm not a big fan of these kind of stands anyways. Uh, but here's the metal pieces. Uh, they clip in on the sides uh, for the word bubble and the uh, head pool. And I'm going to take this off so I can give you a better look at it. If you look down in here, there's holes uh, on the back here. And there's room for three of them. And you really, really have to work these in. These are very difficult. Sorry, these little rods are banging up against my camera. Uh, but these are very difficult uh, to put in these holes. Uh, and I'll try and show you one here. Once you work them in, it kind of stretches that plastic out. And you can kind of get them in a little bit easier. But they're just really difficult. I'm trying to work that in. There we go. Sorry, I had to pull it off camera. But then once you get in, it works okay. Uh, so there's a look at that. And as we get a closer look at the head sculpts, it comes with two. The first one here is kind of the old school comic version uh, before they uh, you know, drew it with the nipple on the back here of the hood or the, the mask. It doesn't have the stitching you know, here on the top either. Uh, but nice, you know, it's kind of the more uh, plain expression or maybe more realistic expression. Uh, you know, the eyes are very similar in size. Has some very nice wrinkles sculpted in. You can see some shadowing in here with some black through the mask. Very nice detail in there. Some wrinkles sculpted in. The eyes kind of have a gray and then a white of the pupil, which looks really cool. Yeah, it has a nice look to it. You can see that shadowing all the way through and through. You know, in the back and around here as well. And then just in comparison to our other one here, you can see the two of them together. This one definitely has that more comical expression and we'll take a closer look at it see it's got the lip or the little nipple back here on the hood or i mean on the mask and you can see it's got some nice stitching 
you know, through here, sculpted in. Has the bigger eye here on this side, uh, but that same gray and white in the middle. Uh, the same shadowing through and through, the nice wrinkles again in the brow. You know, very nice. They did a great job. Uh, these boats are just plastic. Um, a little bit of paint there on the bottom. And then if I can show you how they plug in here on the figure, just has this uh, round peg. It's very loose though. I don't like that. Uh, just plugs on. It almost will fall on. You know, you can just barely set it up there. And then of course you can tuck in uh, this part um, you know, after you get it on like so, so it doesn't show that cloth. Uh, but you know, it's just really, really loose. Um, so that part I don't like. And as we get a closer look at the actual figure itself, one thing I want to say up front is this is one of the most irritating figures to deal with because of all the pouches and the falling off. Also, his accessories fall off quite easily uh, and don't hold in place. So, you know, yes, it is a very cool looking figure, but this guy is a complete pain in the ass to pose around uh, and keep all his stuff on him. You know, things are just constantly falling off uh, the whole time. So we're trying to get a look at him as well as articulation. I showed you the head and how it pops off very easily. Uh, he can look up a good bit, and I'll try and position that like so. You can see that has a good bit of range of movement underneath there. Uh, it does move down. You have to kind of shift it forward and then move it down. Plenty of pivot, you know, even rotate side to side. You know, plenty of, of range of movement in there with that thing. Uh, you can see it's on a ball down at the bottom and then another one up here at the top. So, you know, that's really cool. And like I said, you can tuck the fabric underneath uh, to get that looking neat. Um, but, you know, it does come off really easy. Uh, you know, here's the pouches. Some nice work on that. I like the straps in here. Some nice paint apps with the silver metallic look. Looks really good. The fabric looks good. Uh, the zipper, the black zipper looks good. More pouches. You know, I like the look of all this stuff. It does have a, a leather look. It's not leather, uh, but it has that aged leather look to it. And I think they did a good job on all the sculpting on the buckles and everything. The stitching on the fabric looks really good through here. You can see some nice detail, some lines in here. <laughs> kind of some cross hatch, uh, and the hand just popped off. We'll just leave that off. Um, so I can show you some other stuff, but you can see it has that cross hatch kind of back here on the elbow pads as well. And I think they used a nice color beige for that. Actually kind of has kind of a dirty look around the edges. And you can see there's some black kind of shadowed in on the red, in fact, as well, which looks good. More buckles back here. Uh, and I like that diamond cut pattern, you know, up here in the black. And you can see it's kind of got a beige overtone here, like maybe it got dusty or dirty. I don't care for these shoulder pads. I don't know why they added them. I don't remember them in the comic. And you can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, they do have a nice metallic look to them. I just don't like them. To me, they seem out of place on the figure, but, you know, that's my opinion. Uh, the gauntlets here are removable and slide off and actually come off very easy. The hands pop off real easy, so these pop off as well. And you have to work it all back on. Um... As far as range of movement with the arm itself, the elbow does bend and does rotate. Uh, the upper arm rotates around. The only problem is with mine, I know in the sideshow video they showed him getting his arm back uh, to grab his sword, but you can see how that cloth comes, gets all binded up in there. Uh, and it almost seems like it's going to stretch or rip. Uh, so I don't really want to push it. Uh, I'm sure if you took the fabric off, he would rotate his arm around completely. Uh, and it feels like there's even some pivot up in there, but, you know, with the, with the suit, really, you can't make use of that range of movement, so I kind of hate that. Uh, anyway, going back to the gauntlet, some nice sculpting in there. It's just plastic. It does have a little L inside there, so you know which one goes on the left and which one goes on the right, which is a cool touch. Uh, looking through the belt, mine got a little off with the paint. You can see some white in there, but... You know, the red and the black looks pretty good. There goes another pouch. You know, these things just fall off. You know, they look cool on there, but they are a pain when you're trying to, to fiddle around with them. The straps are really loose in places. Uh, the belt's okay. It seems pretty tight, but if you'll see up here, it really hangs off of them, and you kind of have to, to pull it from the back and, and work it in. Same kind of sculpting and, and the fabric stitching we saw on this arm on this one. 
uh, and you can see those lines in here through the legs and it looks good that same black overtone through the red uh, underneath there and then we get down here we have some knee pads uh, that kind of match our uh, shoulder pads these things are extremely loose and you kind of have to bunch you can see where I've kind of done it before uh, with playing with these guys you kind of have to bunch the fabric up underneath here and get the strap above it uh, to hold it in place uh, because if not they just kind of fall down around the boots um, you know which I don't like at all uh, and then looking through the boots very nice sculpting uh, you know, it's kind of a rubbery piece there uh, the shoes um, you know are also very nicely sculpted I actually really like the shoes I like the tread on the bottom sculpted all the way through on the bottom um, and it's got some kind of little insignia underneath uh, and the feet uh, you know look pretty good of course they come off real easy too you can see they're on a ball you know so it allows them to pivot you know and it allows them to move a little bit uh, but not much especially with this piece on and it does just pop off you want to go for that look uh, without it you can do so but his legs look really skinny when you do that uh, I don't think that looks right to me uh, but if you want to use the movement on the foot that's kind of the best way to do it because you don't get a lot with that gauntlet up there on his leg um, you know so anyway uh, just taking a closer look at that gauntlet you can see uh, you know it's got buckles sculpted in and lacing some nice gold paint apps there brass you know it looks aged nice wrinkles in there so looks good it's a nice piece uh, so I like it and then uh, looking at the movement on the legs itself uh, these are double jointed knees from what I can tell uh, so those are nice uh, the hips actually move out quite a bit you know um, oh and I didn't look at this knife earlier uh, but it looks like we just broke it yeah afraid so uh, it's clipped in and you can see it just broke off I went the clip on it so that kind of sucks you know and there goes the gauntlet again this guy just really starts falling apart as you move him around. You know, it's definitely cool as a stationary piece. There's a look at that knife. It looks pretty cool. Uh, he, you know, it got broken just then. But we'll, we'll glue that back on, I guess. You know, everything's really fragile, so, you know, you really have to, to be careful with it. One thing I will say, uh, going back to the hips, though, is the suit does, um, you know, keep them from stretching out too far. More, more pouches falling off. But the other thing is with the stand, and I really hate this, is, and it's one of the things I hate about this stand, is this part here does not cup his underside. He doesn't fit on that. So if you see, it comes up right here in the middle, you know, around the ball sack there. Uh, you know, so trying to get that to hold him in, in poses is almost impossible. You know, it's almost like this stand doesn't fit this figure. He's too big, you know, he's too big in the crotch. Uh, but really, it's the whole underside from the back of his butt all the way around to here. This whole part is thicker than this. So it doesn't sit in, it doesn't cup in. So the stand almost becomes useless in that aspect. You just kind of have to balance him on that and play with it. Uh, these legs do seem to rotate around. Uh, but the fabric does prohibit them in there as well. Uh, it does have waist rotation or, or an ab rotation up here and some crunch. Uh, well, I say it has some crunch, but just very little movement in there. It does rotate, looks like, at the diaphragm maybe. And then it does feel like it rotates at the waist as well. Uh, but you can see how loose this, this becomes when you're playing with them. So, you know, I hate, that's the only thing I hate about these figures is you know, once you get them in a pose you like, you have to put them completely back together uh, cautiously and meticulously to get them to look right. So, you know, yeah, overall, I'm not a fan of that. Uh, looking at the back of the figure, uh, you can see same thing we saw on the front. Nice shadowing in the fabric, nice stitching. They definitely did a good job with all the stitching and the look of the suit. You know, looks good through and through. Nice metallic on the back of the belt here. You know, it has some uh, nice metallic up here too. And then just looking at these real quick again, the sheaths for the sword. Like I said, they just clip in up here. Uh, you know, you can't really do much with them, so they just kind of hang. So, 
yeah, overall, I mean, it looks really cool. It's just really a pain in the ass to deal with. Uh, you know, I kind of wish, you know, I know everybody likes playing with the accessories and doing their own thing with them. But some of this I wish was kind of at fixed points that didn't come loose. And I wish the fabric, I don't want the fabric to be so loose it looks stupid. But maybe if they'd give it some flex underneath here so you could actually use some of the articulation, it would have been better. And here's our Deadpool compared to a Hot Toy Snake Eyes over here on the left from the G.I. Joe movie. And you can see here, uh, they stand pretty well in comparison. Uh, of course, Snake Eyes stands a little bit thinner. But, you know, with the thickness of Deadpool's stand, they stand pretty much at the same height. This guy's a little bulkier than Deadpool. You can see his head's a little bigger. He's got bigger shoulders. He's got more massive legs. Uh, so they're a little bit different in scale and proportion-wise. One thing I didn't notice, though, um, the way Hot Toys does their swords, and I think this is metallic, but it's got that chromed-out finish on it, looks much better uh, than this gray they use on the Sideshow swords. I wish uh, Sideshow would adopt this philosophy. Uh, that looks like a real sword to me. And if you're paying this kind of price for premium figures, you know, you know, with real clothes and, and, and real accessories and stuff, you want that, that you know, extra mile of realism. You know, I think, you know, going this route is much better. I also wanted to compare them to the Snake Eyes because they have similar stands. They have that under the crotch stand. And if you'll see here on the Snake Eyes, it has a much bigger dip and it comes out to the front here. So it holds them very well in place. I've actually had this guy in kicking poses and you can see there it holds him, cradles his, his stuff, <laughs> you know, his junk uh, fairly well. Uh, so, you know, it's just much bigger and I'm going to show you. Um, I can get that out there. You can see just a much bigger um, cup size on that one. Uh, than our Deadpool. Uh, so I'm not sure what the deal is with the Deadpool and if they just reused a bracket from another stand. Uh, but I kind of hate uh, that they didn't give us one that actually fits. You know, if we're going to get one of those stands, I like the new, uh, some of the new Hot Toy stands much better. Uh, but if they're going to give us that kind of stand, at least give us one that fits the character or the figure. Um, so that kind of stinks to me. Uh, in my mind but anyway these guys look really cool together you know and i definitely can't wait to get them in some poses versing each other all right and wrapping up our review of deadpool here first off let me say i'm not a huge six scale collector uh, i've got a few of these figures and i've uh, purchased some and passed through some of them you know reselling them uh, over the years so i have experience with them but i'm just not a huge fan um, you know i prefer you know like a marvel legends or a six inch scale figure uh, for action figures just because I can grab these guys off the shelf uh, pose them daily you know and you know play with them or whatever and get them in different poses and stuff and, and put them back on my shelf uh, this guy feels more like a project poser uh, to me uh, whereas you know if you take this guy down and you want to get him in a dynamic pose it becomes more of a project with all the different items falling off of him uh, the risk of breakage um, you know, and, you know, to use the articulation, you've really got to, uh, work around the cloth and it's just all these things that you have to do. And then once you get him where you want him, putting this stuff back on, uh, you know, it's, it's a job almost, uh, to get him in a different pose if it's, you know, if it's much movement to it. Uh, so that's, you know, that's not what I want in this kind of investment. Uh, for me personally, and I know not everybody's like this or, uh, you know, but for me personally, if I'm going to put this kind of investment in this kind of figure, uh, I'll, I just prefer to go ahead and buy a statue because this guy's going to be a stationary posed figure for me. For the most part, I'm going to put him in a pose and he's going to stay that way. Uh, so why not just go ahead and purchase a statue, in my opinion, and not have the trouble? Uh, you know, so, you know, that's just my opinion. I know there's big time, big time six scale collectors out there and you guys love these and hey, more power to you. It's just not my bag. Uh, I will say this, you know, um, you know, overall, he may be a pass for me, but I can definitely understand him being a buy for a six scale collector. Like I said, uh, Sideshow has uh, just really done a good job with it. At, like I said, the first video, nice accessories, uh, you know, and overall, they did a great job with the paint, the sculpting, the little details everywhere. You know, it looks really good. 
Uh, you know, and I think they did a good job with the fabric and aging it and giving where, uh, where it was needed. Uh, you know, so it looks really good. It has a really good aesthetic to it. Um, you know, if I had complaints with the figure, it would be with the stand, uh, you know, and the articulation with the fabric, uh, the stickers. And here's a look at the other stickers from the pack as well. You know, I'm not sure why they didn't go with static clings on this. Uh, these are not going to hold up over time with adhesive. Uh, so I don't like that. Uh, you know, but other than those things, you know, it's definitely a very cool looking figure. Looks very cool posed. Uh, I would just suggest maybe waiting, uh, you know, for you guys until uh, the Deadpool movie comes out because I'm sure Hot Toys is going to do their version of Deadpool uh, or the movie version of Deadpool. And that actually may come out uh, to be a better figure. Uh, in my experience, Hot Toys is always kind of out uh, edged sideshow a little bit. I have my complaints with both. Uh, you know, with issues like breakage, you know, just like on this one. Uh, same thing I've seen on Hot Toys, uh, especially uh, with any kind of time. Uh, I've seen joint, uh, not joints, but uh, the glue come loose on both Hot Toys and Sideshow. Uh, and, you know, little um, rivets and stuff come loose over time. So, you know, those things I've seen with both figures. But just uh, detail and maybe a little more craftsmanship a lot of times I've seen and hot toys uh, over sideshow so you may wait and, and may end up with a better figure uh, of course you know by then this guy may have sold out as well so you know if you're a six scale collector you're just going to have to pick your poison here do you chance it and wait for another deadpool or just go ahead and purchase this one you know if you're not a huge six scale collector uh, guy or girl you know i can't really recommend this figure it's a huge investment and I think you get limited uh, playability out of the figure. Uh, you know, and I know it's an adult collector's toy, you know, it's not supposed to be played with, but, you know, if you're an, uh, an action figure collector that likes to open their figures, then more than likely you, likely you like to pose your figures, and, and this thing's just kind of a pain in the ass to do so. So I can't recommend it for that. Uh, but anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If so, please give them a big thumbs up. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe. Uh, more content coming down the road. I hate the videos have been light this week, guys. I've been working a lot of OT, uh, you know, and some late nights. I haven't had a lot of time to shoot videos. Uh, I do plan to get back on it uh, and get that stuff out. I've got plenty of stuff sitting here to get you guys out. And I, trust me, I want to open it as much as you want to see it. So uh, it's just getting time to do it. Uh, so I will get that out soon. Um, toy art, Facebook, Twitter links in the description below as always. So check us out there. Thank you guys again so much for watching and we'll see you soon.